let's talk about self-discipline and not in the traditional sense. In this pretty definitive guide, I'm going to be talking about my personal approach to self-discipline that's helped me to build habits like reading, journaling, exercising, and I'm going to talk about the six elements of self-discipline that you can go back to over and over again. To start, let's talk about why self-discipline needs to be replaced with self-management. So here is the definition of self-discipline. The ability to control one's feelings and overcome one's weaknesses. So it's giving very Shia LaBeouf just do it! Maybe Gary V five years ago. And sometimes in the moment, just do it, just push through, can be helpful. But for the most part, if you're trying to build some sustainable behaviors, if you're trying to change your day-to-day -day habits, just do it, have some self-control, doesn't help. The research shows that we are really, really overconfident when it comes to how much self-discipline we think future us is gonna have. And some researchers have found that even wanting self-control can actually lead to less self-control. And that's exactly what I've found in my life. So the more that I focus on self-control, the less that I seem to have of it. The more that I focus on the things that I'm going to talk about in this video, the more self-control that I seem to have. Michelle Seagal wrote in her book, The Joy Choice, believing that we need more self-control puts our attention on perceived inadequacies, reducing our confidence, thwarting our intended eating and exercise decisions, and pretty quickly we ask ourselves, why bother? And we don't. But the real problem isn't with self-control, it's simply how we've been thinking about it. In this video, instead of talking about self-control, self-discipline, we're going to talk about self-management. We'll be breaking it down into the six areas of self-management management and we'll talk about as well how to actually build your skills in those areas. Element one, mental readiness. So mental readiness is all about mental preparedness. Let me explain. A good example of building mental readiness is in David Kadavi's writing routine. So as a writer, David spends his afternoons and his nights pouring through books, articles, taking notes, pulling out quotes, getting inspiration. Then he sleeps and when he wakes up in the morning he is full of ideas, thoughts, notes, links to pull from so that he can do his actual writing. And when he sits down on his desk to write, he knows exactly what his writing routine is. There's no thinking involved. In this example, David Kadavi managed his mental readiness by giving his mind what it needed to carry out the task. So he filled his head with ideas so that when he sat down to write, there was no stuckness. Having a writing ritual. So when he sat down to write, he wasn't like, oh, what program am I writing in? How do I actually do this whole writing thing? Where do I pick up? He knew what he needed to do. So here is how to become better at managing your mental readiness. Number one, decide what you are going to do before you do it so that you are mentally prepared for it. Number two, get into the habit of asking, does this task, this habit routine have a really clear start, middle and end point? For example, I recently decided I was going to dedicate like an hour a week to working on YouTube strategy. When I sat back and I looked at it, I realized I didn't know what my start, middle and end point were for my YouTube strategy hour. What does working on YouTube strategy look like? So I sat back, I created a little checklist for things to do in my YouTube strategy hour. I got a mental image in my mind of what that hour would look like and now it's so much easier to do and I don't resist it. It has a clear start, middle and end point. Number three, learn to ask what do I need to do to fit the mood of this work? There's this great quote that says, things aren't difficult to make, what is difficult is putting ourselves in this state of mind to make them. For example, David filled his mind with stuff that he was excited about writing about. When he woke up, he was in the mood to write. Maybe to get into the mood of planning big, you spend your weekend in nature and doing fun new activities. To get into the mood for your life admin day where you get all your admin stuff done, you start with a tidy of the house because it makes you feel really productive in a short period of time. Number four, have a bias towards action over preparedness. Setting up the right beautiful writing ritual is so much fun. Creating little checklists and templates, that might be your bag and that is a good time, but until you've actually tried doing, you won't really know what to put in those checklists, those templates or those routines. I'd push you to do the doing first and then then work on the preparedness. It sounds backwards, but it tends to work better. Number five, learn to simplify big tasks for your mind. So Domestic Blisters does this really well with her five things tidy. So she says in any room, no matter what room, there are five things that you need to tidy up and you can tidy them up in this order. Trash, dishes, laundry, things that have a place, things that don't have a place. The five things tidy is just a tidy, but it's broken down in a way that simplifies it for your mind so you feel more mentally ready. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the tool that I use to 
build all of my websites, michellebee.com.au, my intention app website. On my website, I also have my socials embedded so you can see what's going on on my Instagram and go and follow me over there, which is always a good thing to have on your website. Squarespace is flexible for any kind of creator. So you could be an artist, you could be a creator like myself. Maybe you're selling things. Maybe you want a membership website. They have that down for you. No matter what kind of website you want to create, you can create it on Squarespace and it's all drag and drop, which is so easy. You don't have to be a designer to make a beautiful website. The one thing I love about Squarespace, maybe the most, is that it's no plugins, no patches, no updates. And I always mention that and the reason I always mention it is because I've had websites in the past where you needed to constantly be onto them, updating, making sure you had the patches. I've had websites get hacked because I wasn't onto my updating. So I see that as a huge benefit. Click the link below squarespace.com slash Michelle B and use the code Michelle B to get 10% off of your first purchase. That's squarespace.com slash Michelle B. Use the code Michelle B to get 10% off of your first purchase. Element number two, managing desire. One of the most undervalued ideas when it comes to people talking about self-discipline, self-control is desire. And when you talk to really disciplined people, desire is almost always there. When you're like incredulously asking, how have you stuck to your one hour workout every single day? The response that you're going to get isn't going to be, well, look, I actually hate exercising, but I know that 80 year old me will be happy that I exercise. It's much more likely to be, I look forward to it. It gives me energy. When you talk to someone about their daily riding habit, they're not going to be like, well, actually I find writing really boring like it's an awful time but I want to make it to the New York Times bestseller list and the good thing is is that desire is a part of self-management that you can work on when you turn a behavior or a goal from a should do from a have to into a want to you're a hundred times more likely to actually do something to be consistent to take action for example I used to sit on my couch and I'd try and open up my journal and start writing and I'd just be dreading it I'd be like this is so boring I have nothing to put down on paper. Then I heard a podcast that talked about a whole new style of journaling. Then I read a book that showed me all of the different possibilities when it came to journaling. Now when I sit down and I open up my journal, I'm kind of excited. I'm like waiting for what my brain will give me. And because journaling feels good for me, my desire is higher. Last month I journaled every other day. This month I've journaled nearly every day. And it's just way easier as a habit to keep up because desire is there. And psychologists who suspected that this was the case actually carried out a research study to confirm that. So in this study a bunch of people were encouraged to eat healthy foods another bunch of people were encouraged to exercise more so some people were told to choose the exercise or the foods that they expected to enjoy the most and other people were told to choose exercises or foods that they expected to get the most benefit from and that's the way we all lean instinctively we choose benefits over enjoyment people who lean towards enjoyment had way better results and were more consistent here is how to become better at managing your desire number one enjoyment over impact look for the habits and the goals where there is clear enjoyment, fun, curiosity, rather than benefits. And instinctively, we feel obligated to choose the things that will give us the most benefits. But when we choose the things that give us benefits that we don't look forward to, we don't stick to them for very long. When we choose to the things that give us more enjoyment, we will stick to them for longer. And you'd rather choose the thing that you're going to stick with for longer. Always ask, why aren't I doing it already? Rather than how might I drive this behavior? Nobel Prize winning psychologist and decision making expert Daniel Kahneman said that the best psychology advice he had ever received was instead of asking yourself how can I drive this behavior ask yourself why am I not doing this already a good example of this in my life is around two months ago I started doing home workouts and at first I was like oh I feel so resistant towards doing these workouts what's going on why am I not doing this and when I sat with that question I realized that I saw these workouts as kind of time wasting and pretty boring so once I got to the root of why I wasn't doing the workouts, it was so much easier to get to how to make them more desirable for me. Because I saw them as a time wasting activity, I chunked things down and they were shorter. That way I didn't go, oh God, 30 minutes of time, what a waste. I added in an audio book so it felt less boring. And that's why I always say you're better off just diving straight into behaviors rather than doing excessive ahead of time planning. That way when you dive in, you can figure out what you don't like and then you can up your desire by adding things in, taking things away. Element number three, manage your 
your time. So I see time management as the nitty gritty techniques that makes all of the other stuff that I'm talking about in this video more useful. So we've got things like calendar blocking, pomodoros, creating your to-do list, the Eisenhower matrix time tracking. To learn more about becoming a better manager of your time, I have a video on my top 10 time management tips that we're gonna have linked down below rather than diving into it in this video. Element number four, managing your thoughts and feelings. There are two pretty distinct schools of thought that I see a lot. Number one, motivation comes after action. Action produces momentum, James Clear. So if you've ever said to yourself, okay, I'm just gonna set a 10 minute timer and do this thing. And then after the 10 minutes was up, you were like, actually I can keep on going. That is that first idea in action. Or a thought generates a feeling that in turn motivates a behavior. And if you wanna change, trying to stop the last domino, the behavior, won't do the trick. The feeling is the first domino. If you've ever changed the way that you've thought or felt about a goal or a habit, maybe through reframing or thought training techniques, that is the second idea in action. So I've experienced both of those things and I've found both of those ideas to be helpful in my life. This element is all about the second idea. If you can manage your thoughts and your feelings even 10% better than the average human being, you are going to be a superior self-manager and you're gonna be better at every other element that I talk about in this video. So for example, the other day I was sitting on my couch and I was reading a book, it was morning time, I was feeling good. And then I realized that I had missed a really early meeting. Immediately I was like, oh, you're kidding. And it created feelings of shame because missing meetings and important dates creates a lot of shame for me personally. And then that shame turned into anger because anger is a way easier feeling than shame. In that moment I stopped and I was like, this could mess up my entire day. I could have a wildly unproductive day just because of this one event. And I didn't have time for that. I had a public speaking call that I had to go to. I had a video to script. So I used the thought and feeling techniques that worked for me. I let my thoughts exist, but I didn't really engage with them. And I chucked on a workout video and put my attention towards that. I had such a good little public speaking call. I came out of it and I was singing as I made my bed. I was in such a good mood. And that's because I managed my thoughts and my emotions in that moment. If I didn't know how to manage my thoughts and emotions in that moment, I could have gotten nothing done. Here is how to get better at managing your thoughts and your feelings. Number one, don't listen to the self-help books that tell you to replace your negative feelings and thoughts with positive feelings and thoughts. Instead, pick a studied, proven thought management technique. Think like ACT, DBT, CBT, MCT. All of those come with a ton of well-researched thought management techniques. Look into them, find what you vibe with. Number two, have mental fitness practices in place. There are habits that we've all heard of. Meditation, journaling, exercising, that keep your brain more mentally fit so that it isn't as susceptible to those negative thought spirals. Element five, manage your environment. Managing your environment is all about managing your starting points. Imagine there are two pathways ahead of you. One has a starting point that's really overgrown. You can't really see how to get in properly, but there's another starting point and it's right in front of you. It is totally clear that there's a big old sign. There's even a bucket of leech spray to make sure that your walk is easy. Your mind will naturally pick the clearer and easier starting point. You wanna design your environment so that your starting points are clear and easy like that path. A good example is from a Reddit user who needed to do calf stretches three times a day because they had plantar fasciitis and they found that they just couldn't get themselves to do these stretches. Then they realized that they go and they get coffee, boil water three times a day. So they just pop their little stretching thing right in front of the coffee maker. The right objects were easy to access in the right place at the right time. That is how you manage your starting points. So I, like many people, have my workout mat as a permanent fixture just sitting in my room. Right next to it are some weights, in front of it is a little stand where I can put my phone and play my workout videos. And it's really easy to get really excited about this idea and be like, okay, environment design. You might design your environment once and be like, this is perfect and this is gonna be what gets me to do that habit, work on that goal. And then you might find that it doesn't really do it for you or you're not really into that goal anymore. You're into that goal over here. Your starting points start to feel fuzzier and they start to feel messier over time. So treat environment design as something that you do kind of regularly. Like it could be every month, every quarter. Try to tie it to something you already do once a month or once a quarter, whether that's a life admin day or a spring cleaning day. And remember that environment design needs to go alongside everything in this video. You can't design your environment to do a habit that you hate, that you have so many difficult thoughts and feelings around and expect it to be like magic. A good rule is from Sean Acker. If it takes you more than 20 seconds to do the things that you wanna be doing more of, that's too long. You can also add in another rule, a two minute resistance rule. So anything that you don't wanna be doing with your time should take a long than two minutes for you to start doing. Element six, managing your energy. 
you could be completely obsessed with your goals so wildly into them but if your energy is low it's not gonna happen sometimes it's really easy to get confused between motivation and energy and I saw this TikTok comment the other day that might help motivation but no energy equals rest no motivation equals the therapist did say in this case depression in this context just because you're not keeping up with the habit doesn't mean you're depressed but you should revisit the other elements in this video it's not to do with your energy if you want to dive deeper then this video is the energy management side of things I have a video called seven ways to get more energy in your days and your weeks where I go into the fundamentals of energy management that is going to be linked on the screen and down below I appreciate you so much and I'll see you soon